Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to see how we can go from this row data here where we have the date and product and region and sales amount to this dynamic map dashboard where we can select different products and it shows us the sales in different regions for those products. And we can also select different dates here. So we can select different years or quarters or months or days using this timeline. And we're going to see step by step how we can create such a dashboard. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so here we have our raw data and the first thing we need to do is to insert a table. So I'm going to highlight any cell inside my raw data, go to insert and then table here and then my table has headers and as you can see here it's highlighting the correct range so i'm going to click ok here i'm going to create a table you want to choose the green color here you can choose any color that you would like and we have our table here now what we need to do is to create a pivot table out of that table so i'm going to highlight any cell inside my row data here and then go to insert pivot table and i'm going to create a pivot table i'm going to create it in a new worksheet and i'm going to click ok so as you can see here I've created my pivot table and now I'm going to get the sales for each region. So I'm going to put my region on the row section and I'm going to put the sales amount here on the summation of value section. I'm going to move my pivot table a bit here. So I'm going to highlight it, select it and press Ctrl and X to cut and then Ctrl and V to paste here. Now I'm going to change the color from a pivot table to be green just to fit with the overall green theme that I have here. So this green should be okay. Now let's start creating our chart. So our chart here, as you can see, is a bubble chart. But first of all, we need to insert an empty scatter plot and then we'll convert it to a bubble chart. And we'll need to create this table here, which is going to be like a helper table to help plot our values on the bubble chart. So let's see how we can do that step by step. Now let's go back to our sheet here and what we need to do first is to insert a blank scatter plot. So without selecting any data here, we're going to go to insert and then go to insert scatter here and insert a blank scatter plot. And now we need to put a background image, which is going to be our map on this blank scatter plot. So we're going to make it have a background image of a map. So while selecting it, you will have these fill options here, or you can right click and then go to format chart area and select the fill options here. And you're going to select picture or texture fill. And you can get a picture of a map online. If you click online option here and you can search for world map vector map. And as you can see here, it's filtering for creative commons only. And this is something that is related to the rights of using the map. So select a map with no rights. Make sure that there are no copyrights that are accompanied with this map. So this map here, the green one, this one is on a website called Pixa Bay, and it's a free images website and there are no attribution required and it's free for commercial use. So I'm going to select this one, but you're going to make sure that the map you're going to select is free for commercial use and there is no attribution required. And if there is attribution required, then you need to put a link with where you got the map from under the map, or you got to put the name of the person who created the map, the author. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click on insert. Also, if you have this on a file on your computer, so you can click on this file option here and grab a file from your computer. It's basically an image. So I've got my map here. And now what we need to do is to create this helper table here that is going to help us plot our data on the map. Now let's create our helper table here. And on this table, you need to put the X coordinates and the Y coordinates, and you need to put the sales amount as well. And you need to put the region. So you need to basically put the X and Y coordinates for each region here. So I've got here four regions. So I'll just copy them and paste them here. And if you have more regions, you can add them later. You can also put them on a dynamic range that expands. But let's just do something simple here, which is just to add the regions. And now we you got to put the X and Y coordinates. You can put any numbers, just make sure that they're between two defined borders. So for example, I'll put any numbers here for between one and 10. So any just random numbers for now, and then I'll adjust them later. Okay, so just put some numbers here between one and 10, for example. Now what we need to do is to plot these numbers on the chart on our scatter plot. So 
what we're going to do is to right click and then go to select data here and then we're going to add a new series so i'm going to add a new series i'm going to call the series sales per region for example and the x values i'm going to select my x values here on the table and the y values i'm going to select my y values i'm going to click ok i'm going to click ok again so as you can see here we managed to plot a scatter plot on this image now we need to do an important step which is to fix the scale for these axes for the horizontal axis and for the vertical axis because these axes will adjust automatically depending on the values that you put but you're actually going to put the values between two definite borders so between 0 and 10 for example and you're always going to stick to values between 0 and 10 so you gotta also fix the borders for the axes so your axis should be between 0 and 10 as well so I'm gonna select my horizontal axis I'm gonna right click on it go to format axis and I'm gonna make sure that the bounds here the minimum is 0 and the maximum is 10 and it doesn't matter what the bounds are as long as you know them and they are well defined so you could put between 0 and 20 and you could put your numbers for X and Y coordinates between 0 and 20 as well so as long as your axes and your X and Y coordinates are between the same borders you should be okay so as you can see here the bounds are between 0 and 10 and now i'm going to select my vertical axis right click format axis and i'm going to put it as well between 0 and 10. as you can see here when you define the bounds here you have these reset buttons because now they are defined they are not going to uh, be stretched or sh shrunk depending on the values that you have for the x and y values so as you can see here they are now both between 0 and 10 and this is a one-time work that you need to do so that you can make your map chart dynamic so this is a one-time work that you need to do beforehand now let's start inserting the correct x and y coordinates here for our different regions so as you can see here asia for this map asia is here so let's say it's going to be between for example 7.8 on the x-axis and about 9 on the y-axis so i'm going to put here 7.8 and 9 okay so 7.8 and 9 for asia and then for europe as you can see here it's about maybe 5.7 and 9 so let's put 5.7 and 9 here for europe so this is europe and now we've got also north america north america is about maybe 1.6 and 9 as well so yeah maybe we can put that as a 1.7 yeah 1.7 and 9 for north america and for south america it's going to be about 2.5 and let's say 4.5 2.5 and 4.5 no that's going to be 3 actually 3 and 4.5 okay so as you can see here is south america so we've put the correct coordinates for our different regions here now let's populate our sales amount column here on our helper table so i'm basically going to get my values here from this pivot table so i can do a simple vlookup here so vlookup the name of the region in this pivot table here and make sure to fix your table array and then the column index number is going to be two and the range lookup is going to be an exact match as you can see here i get the correct sales amount for each region here and we can give this a bit of formatting a bit of number formatting so i'll give this dollars formatting here as you can see here i've been able to get this sales amount now we need to convert our scatter plot to a bubble chart because we need to use a bubble chart because how big the bubble is is going to show us what the sales amount is so the more the sales the bigger the bubble so i'm going to click on any point here i'm going to right click and then go to change series chart type here and then under xy scatter i'm going to select a bubble chart so this bubble chart here i'm going to click ok now as you can see here the bubble chart is a bit confused on what the x values should be and the y values and how big the bubble is so where should it get its values from so we're going to clear that confusion basically i'm going to right click here and then go to select data here and i'm going to click on my series here sales per region i'm going to click edit here and i'm going to define my x values so we've got the series name correctly here series x values these are the x values so the bubble chart is exactly the same as a scatter plot but it has an extra dimension here which is the bubble size so i'm going to select my x values for x and y values are correctly selected and bubble size it's got to be the sales amount i'm going to click ok here 
I'm going to click OK. So as you can see here, our bubble chart here has been put correctly in different regions here. The bubbles here are about the same size because the sales amounts are all in the 200,000 region. However, when there is bigger difference, you will see uh, more difference between the size of the bubbles. You can also adjust here the options for the bubbles. Size represents area of bubbles or width of bubbles. So we're going to select area of bubbles here and scale bubble size too. You can change the scale here. Maybe we could make the scale a bit smaller here because the bubbles are too big relative to the map. So maybe we can make it a, an 80 for example. So this is a better size. I also want each bubble to show the sales amount beside it. So I'm going to right click on it, add data labels here and then add data labels. As you can see here, it's added some labels, but these labels are not correct. This is not what I want the bubble to show. I actually want the bubble to show the sales amount. So I'm going to click on any of the data labels here and then right click format data labels. And I want the data labels to be the bubble size actually. I'm going to remove the Y value. So as you can see here, it's showing now the sales amount. We can make it a bit clearer by bolding the font, increasing the font size here. And maybe we can give it a white background as well. So as to stand out here. So white background with black font. And as you can see here, now the values stand out more. Now we need to do some sort of a conditional formatting effect here to show the region with the highest sales. So as you can see here, on the finished dashboard when we select any product or do any changes you can see here that the region with the highest sales stands out with a different color so let's see how we can do that so basically in order to do conditional formatting here on your chart points you need to create another series so we're going to create another series here called max sales so i'm going to add another column here called max sales and i'm going to make the values for it it's basically that if the region has the max sales it will populate its value otherwise it will be blank so equals if this is equal to the maximum of all these values then show me this value Otherwise, show me a blank and close brackets, press enter. Let's drag the formula down. As you can see here, the one with the maximum sales is the one here that shows the value. Now let's give it a bit of formatting here with dollars. And now let's add the extra series. So I'm going to right click here on my chart, go to select data and then add another series here. And the series name is going to be max sales. And the X values are going to be the same as our original series here. Y values as well are going to be the same. However, the bubble size is going to be the max sales column. I'm going to click OK, click OK again. And as you can see here, the one with the max sales stands out here with a different color. Now we need to insert the slicer for our products and our timeline as well for our dates. So I'm going to select my pivot table here, go to insert and then go to slicer. And I want to insert a slicer for my products. I'm going to click OK here. So as you can see here, I've managed to insert a slicer that's going to be able to filter my pivot table with my products. And I'll just give it a different color here. So I'll give it this green color and we will do some more tweaks here. So as to make it blend with the background. Now to do some more tweaks here to this slicer, because I actually created a custom slicer style that makes it blend with the background here. And let's also remove our grid. So view and then remove the grid lines and as you can see here our slicer blends with the background so let's see actually how i created this custom slicer style it's very easy and i showed it on a previous video as well so if you click on the slicer go to options here i can actually copy an existing style here so i'm going to copy this green style duplicate it and i'm going to name it no background no fill two and i'm going to format the whole slicer here click on format here and then fill with no color border no border I'm going to click OK. So I created my custom style here and I can start using here my custom style. And it's the same. Actually, this is how I created this style. So as you can see here, now I'm able to select a product here and it shows me the sales in different regions and I can select multiple products as well. If I hold the control button here and select multiple products and you can see here as well that the region with the highest sales stands out with a different color. Now let's insert a timeline. So I'm going to select here my pivot table, go to insert and then go to timeline. And I'm going to select date here because the timeline is something that allows you to filter for dates. And I'm going to move my timeline here. I'm going to give it a green color as well. So I created a custom 
timeline style here and it's the same idea as creating a slicer style a custom slicer style so you will do the same steps and you're going to be able to create a custom timeline style and as you can see here here is my custom timeline style and it blends nicely with the background since it doesn't have any fill or borders just uh, be advised this timeline is available only from excel 2013 onwards if you have an older version of excel you can use slicers so you can create a year column for example on your data here you can create a year column by using the year function and a month column by using the month function and use slicers instead now we can do just the final touches here on our chart so we can select the grid lines here and press delete on our keyboard to delete the grid lines so we've deleted the vertical grid lines let's delete the horizontal grid lines as well and we can delete as well the axes so i'm going to select my x-axis here and press delete and y-axis and press delete and as you can see here we have our clean looking dashboard as well here and you can filter with different years so filter with 2017 and with a different product as well 2018 as you can see here it's interactive and it shows the region with the highest sales for these filters now it's a good practice to have your pivot table on a different worksheet so you can select your pivot table here and then move it to a different worksheet so i'm gonna select it press ctrl and x on my keyboard create a new worksheet here called pivot and just paste my pivot table to this new worksheet but look at what happened here actually i can't get the sales amount and the maximum sales because i'm now looking in the wrong place so actually i'm gonna do my vlookup again here so vlookup this region here in this pivot table and it's gonna be on the second column and it's an exact match as well and i'm gonna drag the formula down as you can see here my map chart is being plotted again also guys if you want to hide this helper table don't hide the rows because if you hide the rows actually the chart points will disappear so i'm going to press ctrl and z here so it's better to either put it somewhere uh, in the corner here like where no one can see it or you can put it on a different sheet so you can just highlight it cut it and put it on a different sheet as well so that's it guys for creating a dynamic map sales dashboard thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you on the next one thank you for watching the video if you like the video press the like button make sure to share it with your friends as well subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you'd be notified with each new video you can download the example workbook through the link below in the description make sure as well to check my excel courses links below in the description as well Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.